What's up, Eric? What's up? You look fantastic. Thank you. It's my quarantine look. You're at the restaurant now. Yeah, I am at uh, my restaurant, and we are at this moment, we are about to power wash and repaint the patio. Okay. It's project time, man. Okay, so that's a, so you're doing that for the long term. Is that a cleaning thing or is that just a rehab and renovation thing that you've been planning on doing for a while? Rehab and renovation that we've been planning on. We've, we've passed the deep cleaning stage now and we are on to the, yeah, renovation, uh, small project, checks like pouring resin, painting things, trying to make as many things look brand new as possible. Right. So you're in, so you said you're in your store. Your yes, store. Yes, my store is in Newport Beach. Right. And so give a little background on who Sharky's is. Uh, Sharky's Restaurant Group was started in 93 mm -hmm. by the former owner of the Red Onion Restaurant Group and his son. Um, and in the past, 20 plus years we have come to now a total of 11 restaurants 10 mm -hmm. that are open one under construction still under construction during quarantine mm -hmm. and yeah i mean there are five sharkies and five other concepts okay yeah sharkies as as a concept is a uh, Baja Cantina Mexican. I mean, I would say we do, you know, most most of our business is uh, bar business, mm -hmm. but we do a good good amount of restaurant business, especially obviously in the summer because, as you know, we're about fifty yards from the sand. Right. And are all Sharkies in Orange County? No, no. So we are up and down. Um, from Santa Barbara all the way down to Newport Beach. Okay. And for the East Coasters that don't know that, okay, Orange County, Newport Beach is, I'd say, from Los Angeles. You fly into LAX, you're about 45 minutes to an hour traffic, depending from Los Angeles. Correct. Yep. Correct. So there was a show on the Fox called The OC. Anybody remember <laughs> that? Yeah, that was Newport Beach. Right. So that's where you're at. And that's, so your Newport Beach store right now, you're the operating partner. Correct. You have 50 people there, you said. 50 employees, yes, total. 50 employees, 50 employees. And so when we were talking yesterday, setting this whole deal up, you were, the, the thing that I really liked the conversation that we had, I mean, I've been to the place, I was there last summer. I was impressed with everything. And just so people see, get a picture of what's going on. So you're in a plaza, essentially. Yes. Is where your so, place is. So we are in uh, what we call McFadden, uh, McFadden Square. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a plaza off the beach. Um, we are, like I said, 50 yards from the sand, 75 yards from um, Newport Pier. Mm -hmm. And in this plaza, since going all the way back to the 30s, it's been a, a central area for bars and restaurants. Mm -hmm. So... The bar across the plaza has been there since um, sometime in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the buildings here are really old. Our building is built in 1940-something. Mm -hmm. uh, everything around here is basically bars and restaurants. So mm -hmm. about the most corporate thing we have is we have a spaghetti factory mm -hmm. right across the street. What's and that? Then, what's spaghetti factory? They don't have that out here. Okay, well, sorry. Yeah. It's a, maybe it's just a West Coast thing. And then yeah. you got Chipotle. We got that. Okay, we got a Chipotle a couple blocks okay. away. Uh, okay. And then most of the homes down here, which press up on both sides of us, are vacation rentals. Mm -hmm. Most people use them as vacation rentals. There are a lot of locals as well, but I mean, probably 30 to 40% of our business is vacation rentals as well. Okay. So we were talking and you mentioned also the amount of business that you do 
on a on a weekend is really significant. So you say you're doing how much like randomly on a Friday night, Saturday night? I mean, on a good Friday, we do twenty to twenty two thousand dollars total day. On a good, you know, Saturday, it's thirty thousand dollars. On a good Sunday, it's thirty thousand dollars. I mean, yeah. a good week, a good week for us is a hundred twenty grand. Okay, so that's good money. You guys are rocking. Things are going good. And then mid March, things. You want start me to walk? Happen. Yeah, you want me to walk you through how that went down? So around. Yeah. I mean, probably around the 10th, mm -hmm. it, it was pretty clear that things were going to start changing. So I can't remember offhand when the order from the governor came in to go to half capacity. I believe that was on the 16th. It was Sunday night. So it was the 15th night mm -hmm. that he made that thing. By Monday, we had taken half of our furniture out on the 16th. Now... March 17th is St. Patty's Day, which is a, normally a very big day for us, probably $45,000, something like that. Mm. Um, I think I was the only one that was pretty sure that we were going to get closed that day. Mm. But the city was not planning on voting on that until Wednesday. Mm. And our neighboring city, Huntington, had voted on Monday to keep businesses open. Mm. And they weren't going to meet again until the following Monday. Uh, mm. County came in on... County came in on... Tuesday about three o'clock Pacific and made a declaration that they wanted everything to close down except for takeout. By mm -hmm. six o'clock, cops were going door to door down here and asking everybody to close up. Wow. Yeah. So they had the local PD actually knocking on the plaza on the business doors and saying you got to close down and just do takeout. Well, they didn't actually say that we had to. They the funny thing was they asked, they said, we can't really force you, but we're asking. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to look, you don't want to look like you're not listening to local authorities. So of course mm -hmm. we agreed right away mm -hmm. as did, as did everybody else. Yeah. Right. So that, so that was, you said what, like uh, right after St. Patty's day. No, that was on St. Patty's. That was on St. Patty's day. Now, now normally for a St. Patty's day by two o'clock, we're full. Mm -hmm. If it's on a weekday and it was on a Tuesday, there was, not even 45 people in here. So from St. Patty's Day on, you were only takeout. That's where you've no, been? No, we, we closed completely. You closed Stay completely? Up. Okay. So as a company, if you want to go there now, as a company, we close everything that day. Mm -hmm. And then we made a plan for opening up and seeing how it goes. So we did that um, at tower our concept in hermosa which is really popular with the locals up there to see how that went mm -hmm. by the time that it looked like that was going pretty good mm -hmm. they had that was by the next week they had shut down the beach down here so if you go outside here there's barricades closing all the parking there are barricades on the boardwalk there are barricades on the pier mm -hmm. so by that point you know, it was, it was pretty much over down here because the first weekend after they had closed the businesses, it was 75 out and the beach and this parking lot were packed. Yeah. And I think that that really scared city officials and they decided to just close everything down. So you had to close down and you have 50 employees. When we were prepping for this yesterday, you were making some points that I hadn't thought about, and I think a lot of people that, you know, just go to restaurants as, you know, their entertainment or just casual this, casual that, there's real people that are working there, and it's a real industry that, for a lot of people, is their livelihood. For a lot of people, it might be transitional work, but when that industry takes the hit that you've taken over the last 30 days, talk about what you were telling me about how that just has an effect on the overall economy, especially where you live in a tourist a tourist spot well i think for us in this area all of us are obviously in a lot of trouble because once people stopped traveling which was probably a week before we could really start to feel it yeah but beyond that i i do think that people will travel before mm. they start allowing us back into restaurants as a whole at least right. without restrictions as far as capacity mm -hmm. but as I was saying to you, 
I think that what people are not understanding is that you have a lot of people on unemployment that depending on what they claim as their tips and some places, places you have to claim everything. That's the only way to get your money. Mm -hmm. You're making, I mean, let's say probably 75% of what you were making before Mm -hmm. you bring these people back when we come back and they open us at half capacity or Mm -hmm. half capacity with a curfew Mm -hmm. or, and what is, what is the business going to look like at that point? Are people going to want to come out? Mm -hmm. We don't know, but Mm -hmm. either way, we're talking about bringing people back and they're probably getting half the hours they were getting before. And Mm -hmm. on those hours that they're working, they're probably making 30 to 40% of what Mm -hmm. they were making before. So Mm -hmm. now you're taking people off unemployment at 75% and bringing them back at 30 to 40%. And Mm -hmm. that is going to have, I think, a bigger effect on the economy than people understand. Mm -hmm. I worked in restaurants since I was 18 up until, I don't know, maybe my late twenties. And then I was in, I worked for Cisco foods for a little while. So I know what it's like to be front of the house and back of the house in the kitchen. And I, how dependent people are on the income that they're making there, whether they're career bartenders, career GMs, career servers, or people that are just getting started out in life. They're college students. Um, Just getting that first apartment with a group of people and they're depending on that money. And now they don't have the money. So like we were talking yesterday, they're moving back with mom and dad. Um, They have a choice to make as to whether to come back and work with you for potentially less than they're getting on unemployment. I mean, how do you have conversations with people like your employees that you're, you have 50 people that you're talking to, some of them are cooking, some of them are back there now, I guess, like helping with takeout and stuff. But I mean, how do you have those talks with people? Like, what do you say? Well, I think with, we're still so early in it. And yeah. some of those people have gotten their stimulus check. Some of those people have gotten a good deal from unemployment. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the younger people, like we were talking before, mm-hmm. if you're, you know, in your early 20s and you're in college and your college is shut down, your work is shut down. Mm-hmm. you're living in an apartment with people that can only make toast and, and mac and cheese and stuff. Why wouldn't you go home? Right. Right. So at this point you go home. Yeah. What's the timeline on coming back? Right. And can your parents afford to send you back? Right. How has their life been affected? Right. Because even like you were just saying, you work for Cisco. Like I have friends that work for Aramark, which is another, company that does towels and Mm -hmm. and he's laid off because there's nowhere to deliver to right and think about the beer purveyors or you know the liquor purveyors they're shutting down all half their routes Mm -hmm. those people are getting laid off or furloughed Mm -hmm. and those people are going to come back and probably have half the deliveries they were having before Mm -hmm. So who knows what their work schedule is going to look like, or Mm -hmm. if they're even going to be able to bring them back, they'll probably just add a couple stops on somebody else's route. The big industry affects a lot of people. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the point I wanted you to make because I hadn't thought about that. The ripple effect that the restaurant bar restaurant industry, them shutting down has on the overall economy is huge. Yeah. And And then the other thing is, is when we were talking before, I mean, retail has been dying for what, the last five years, six yeah. years? We can go back further if you want. Mm-hmm. And if you look around certain areas or certain strip malls, anywhere you are, and I know you were talking about Phoenixville, but mm-hmm. most new places opening are restaurants or yeah. frozen yogurt places right. or Chipotle's or yeah. the pokey version of Chipotle or right. the Indian version of Chipotle right. or the Greek version of Chipotle, right. all those places. Mm-hmm. That's all that's opening. So that's all the jobs that have been filling up, especially like we were talking about for the younger people. That's where they work. And, I, and for, for the coffee shop right next to us, I mean, they're still open. They're doing maybe 30% of the business they were doing before because there's nobody out here. Mm-hmm. But you know, half their employees are college students, they all went home. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they open back up again, that involves training people Mm -hmm. 
hiring people, mm -hmm. all of that costs money, money mm -hmm. that we don't have because mm -hmm. we haven't been open. Right. Wow. So it's been about 30 days that you've been yeah. in this new normal or this current situation. Yes. What are you doing now? M meaning what services are you providing and how are you providing them? So right now we are, as far as Newport Beach, we're not doing anything. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the company, we are opening another concept up for to go starting on Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how that goes. I would assume, judging by the plan and what it seems like is happening, that our next step would be if this doesn't get any better in the next 21 days to open another one, preferably yeah. in Orange County or Long Beach, somewhere in between mm -hmm. and see how that goes because we have to get some kind of revenue flowing in and we have to get some of our people back to work. Yeah. So are you taking just like every other business or every other industry, more or less like a measured approach to what you do next? I mean, because I mean, I was reading that the governor's starting to, maybe I'm wrong, starting to consider reopening some things, lifting some restrictions. I think you guys are officially shut down until when? Like the middle of May, is that it? Or May 15th, is that it for you? Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't comment on what he probably will do at that point. My guess yeah. is, and I think our guess as a company is that it'll push another, probably till days. the end of May at least. But, but we're in Orange County and mm -hmm. LA County is going to be a lot more strict than Orange County. Orange County has a lot less cases than LA County. Right. Orange County is a lot more conservative leaning. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, and just like I said, our city wasn't even going to vote until Wednesday when every other city had already voted. Mm -hmm. So my guess would be that as soon as he he leaves it up to counties like he did with closing that will probably be the first county open that right. would be my guess right what that's going to look like at that point i have no idea yeah. and then you know there could be another flare up and they're going to shut us all down again right. and in which case how are we going to manage taking care of those people county by county it's it's a crazy situation right, right. So, and as I was explaining to you, I think that we're learning from the concept that we have open to go certain things about delivery apps and services, what is actually selling and what is not, what is the check average, how many people do we actually need to work to run it. Um, some things about to go have turned out to be harder than being open. Mm. And you know, the first thing we learned about delivery apps is that they, they take a large commission. And I would so if encourage you wanna, people. So, so if you want to help your local, if you yes. want to help Sharkies, you do curbside. If you want to help, you help Sharkies, if you want to help your local restaurants, do curbside pickup. Because mm -hmm. not only does that money go more directly to the restaurant, but your tip goes to the people working at the restaurant. And I'm not saying that these delivery people don't deserve tips or shouldn't be doing what they're doing there are plenty of ways to use delivery service right. but if you're trying to support a local restaurant or mm -hmm. somebody that you consider friends or mm -hmm. somewhere you always took your significant other mm -hmm. do curbside pickup right most of these places are trained how to do that safely we do everything with masks and gloves and mm -hmm. through the car window and like i said the money goes more directly to those people yeah yeah Bam. So uh, did you have to lay off everybody all at once or did you just have to like put a not open business, not, not open now sign or what did you have to do? We, as a company, everybody yeah. that we furloughed, mm -hmm. we immediately laid out all the things that they needed to do to get unemployment. We connected them with every company, liquor purveyor, uh, liquor 
actual liquor companies like Tito's and some other ones are doing funds for out of work mm -hmm. restaurant people. Mm -hmm. We sent them all the things to fill out all of those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people have gotten grants from them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were easily able to get on their unemployment. Some people took longer than others, but we also have a newsletter going out to all our employees mm -hmm. every week, letting them know what other funds that we found, how mm -hmm. things are going here, what our plans are. We're trying to keep all our employees informed because, you know, we want to see as many of them back as possible when this is over. Yeah. And that's the vibe I got when I went there last summer. I mean, it was very comfortable there. You know what I mean? Like people were, and I'm not talking about the, I mean, yeah, the customers, but your team really liked each other. You know what I mean? So I, I could tell that you guys look out for people is why I asked that, you know, because I know that's just got to be as an employer, when you have to have those conversations, it's got to rip your guts out. Yeah, it does. But the, the comforting thing about it is that we're all in this together. Yeah. There are a lot of people that are affected by this that aren't in this industry that are, yeah. are dealing with it. And, you know, people that work at gyms are out of work. That's a huge thing out here. Yeah. So there are a lot of people that, that aren't working that we're all in this together. So, yeah. And again, it's only been 30 days. I know it feels like it's been 90 mm -hmm. days, 120 days. Mm -hmm. There's only so much Netflix you can watch, mm -hmm. but it's it's only been 30 days. We don't really know where this is going. And the other thing I hang on to is that you're right. My my people like each other. We've had a couple of Zoom meetings. We're having a Zoom happy hour party today with the entire staff. Mm -hmm. Anything to keep us all together. All the partners, we're having Zoom meetings every Tuesday to try and mm -hmm. stay positive. Mm -hmm. Anything we can do to keep our people together keep everybody together, keep it rolling because it's going to change. It's going to let up. You know, there's economy's going to open up. You guys will continue to phase back up incrementally as the restrictions loosen up, but you just don't quite know what that looks like yet. But have you felt, and do you see over the last 30 days, are you, do you feel like you're in a little bit of a rhythm of a routine? You kind of have a process. Me yeah. Me personally. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that. I mean, it's all screwy. You know how, how much of your routine changes. You, yeah. you can't go to your gym like you used to. You can't go to your restaurants like you used to. Mm -hmm. You can't all sorts of stuff. And I think that as we were talking about, I don't know if I told you this, but I don't think that it really hit me too hard until I went to pick up food uh, a couple weeks ago and walked into a, a restaurant, an Italian restaurant in Long Beach, and it's a beautiful place, and it was empty. Mm -hmm. And the people working there looked so sad. Mm -hmm. And then it hit me how much I miss restaurants. I, mm -hmm. I love this business. I love the people that work in this business. I love hanging out with people that work in this business. I love talking about this business. And it does hurt me to think about all the people that are in this industry that are hurting so bad right now. And I, like I said to you, I, I don't think it's being talked about enough because there are a lot of people that make a career and a living out of this that are gonna be deeply affected. And I don't think we're gonna know the actual scope of it for a while right yeah yeah i mean it, it's a it's a lot of workers a lot of young workers and a stat that you threw out there i'm not trying to hold you to it but you, you said you read somewhere that a large portion of the people that are unemployed are under 40 what did you say under 30 yeah. something like that yeah under 40 yeah under 40 that's huge that's huge yeah. i mean and the effect that has on a young person's psyche that's either just starting to get into the workforce or just starting to just graduate from college or working their way through They're you know, trading dollars and dimes and they're trying to make it work. And then bang, you know, yeah, so these think, people that are like under 30, they live they're they're in COVID they've dealt with the recession, their perspective of what they want. They don't want our parents' lives. 
know what I mean? Like they don't want, they're not looking for, I don't think a lot of them are looking for the, um, you know, married two kids, yard and pension. That's not the no, lifestyle. No, those ideas are changing. Totally changing. And I mean, who's to say what these types of life events and social events will have on their perspective and what they want to do with the rest of their lives. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that I think about those people a lot, but, and I do wonder how it's going to shape their view of not only their lives, but how these things are actually set up to run. Right. But I also think about the person in their late thirties, early forties, that's serving at some chain restaurant like Applebee's or, you know, California pizza kitchen, something like that. And mm -hmm. it's gotta be really scary. Yeah. And there was a great piece on 60 minutes a couple of weeks ago about a restaurant in New York where they followed an owner and a server and, you know, she didn't know how she was going to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And that's coming up on the next month. Right. Yes. And then, like I said, how is she going to make ends meet when you let her come back at 40% of what she was making before? Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's, there's a long-term fallout for millions of people. And it needs to be told. You know, people need to understand that. You know, and that's, it's crazy, man. So, but like you said, there's light at the end of the tunnel. It will open up. You guys have taken steps to change over the last 30 days. You're providing your people with information so that they can have access to the resources they need to make ends meet as best as they can, you know, however right. they can. As the government lifts up the restrictions, you're prepared to bring people back as much as you can, as often as you can. You're kind of full, not, well, full steam ahead with attempting to move forward with your overall Sharky's business plan. So it's not like you're shutting the doors of restaurants and boarding them up or anything like that. You're still moving forward with all that. And if today or tonight being Friday, someone wants to order from Sharky's, they're going to come and do curbside pickup because that helps you better. Mm -hmm. And what are the options that you guys like, you've scaled back from your overall menu, right? I assume a little bit, or are you still offering the whole menu? Like, what are you offering people tonight? And when can they come and pick it up? Like, what have you so done? Just what we are doing is a little bit scaled back, but we're doing, I believe, five cocktails to go. And those are 30% of the business that we're doing is that. So it's okay. the greatest thing is that they let us do that. Right. So I mean, that's the big lesson we've learned. And so now at every concept that we're opening up, we're trying to plan for what cocktails would be the best to go or that people would be interested in. And, and that's the data that you guys are feeding off of to make a plan for these concept stores that you're opening up. Like, correct. Right. Yeah. Sorry, so, so no, so that's, that's what we've learned so far about yeah. this new to go business is that right. the cocktails to go are really saving <laughs> a lot of the business especially any of the places that are open that are within the same type of concept that we are it seems like the the cocktails to go are 30 to 40 percent of the business yeah and food well and yeah yeah yeah, but, and your menu. You know, like I've said a million times, in this business, there's so much money made on food, but a lot of your money's made on alcohol. Because, and that's because it's a pennies business, right? When it comes to food, meaning per plate, yeah, it's much, the much more cost effective. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. cost per plate isn't isn't huge, or the right. profit per plate rather. Right. right, right. By cost, it's night and day. Yeah. Well, this is good. Well, for now. For now. I, and I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound negative. I do believe deep down that when this is over, that people will appreciate these things more than they did before. I think that the snapback for 
businesses like ours will be really good because people will really appreciate going out more mm-hmm. than they did. Mm-hmm. My only hope is that people can afford to do it at that point. Yeah, right. I think some people will, even if they can't afford to do it, will do it because they just got to get out of the house and they want to yeah. get back to some sort of normal. You know what I mean? Right. Like people are dying for normal. They want their lifestyles back, you know? And one of those things I want to do is come out to, to Sharky's or come out to a restaurant and, and just be around people again. You know, we're social animals. People want yeah, to be around Yeah, it's the first thing people. that I will do. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, the snapback, when things start to open up, I think will be awesome for you guys. But in the meantime, for some of these smaller places that are struggling, you know, because they don't have the overhead, they don't have the partnerships, they don't have these things, um, will be tough, you know, and yeah, the message that you put out there about the restaurant business as a whole is, is so important, man. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, support it, your it, local restaurant, support your local restaurant, support your local, support restaurant. your local restaurant. There's somewhere you and your wife like to go, go get to go from there, but pick it up curbside. What else do you want to say? What else do you want to talk about? What other message do you want to get out there? Anything? Just be aware of, of how many people are being affected by this and how many people, like I said, make this their living. And you know, it's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a, a long road back to the way it was. Yeah. And what's up with the LA Rams fan base? Is that the fakest sports fan Man. base in the world? <laughs> when the Eagles played out there a couple years ago, man, it was a it was a home game. Listen, we don't look. There's only there's only one thing. Okay, there are, there's the Lakers, uh-huh. and everything else is down here. You can say Dodgers. I mean, everything else is – even the Dodgers are, are the only thing that rises above the rest of it. But the right. Lakers are on another level. I mean, you've been out here when the Lakers are good. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. We don't care about football out here. In California, Rams, come on. I mean, we care about high school football. We care about college football. But there's no history of NFL football out here. People don't care. Yeah. USC is big. Yeah, that's what I mean. College football, when – when USC is good, it's yeah. it's pretty big out here, but it's not like the Lakers. Lakers right. drive this town. Lakers drive everything. From here to Santa Barbara, all the way out to Vegas, all the way down to Mexico. It's all Lakers. Yeah, nobody cares about the Rams. I can't stand Jared Goff. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand him. Yeah, man, that was a that was an Eagles home game, huh? It it was. That's funny because Zach Ertz and a couple of the guys were in here the week of that game because they practiced out here all week. You get a lot of celebrities there and stuff? Like- a, lot of, a lot of sports celebrities, yeah. Um, regular, like, movie celebrities here and there, some good ones, but out-of-town sports teams, they all come here. Do you geek out when you see them, or are you kind of used to it by now? No, I don't really. Be honest. No, I, I really don't. I, I think the only – Let's see. I mean, Sidney Crosby was here. That was kind of like, wow, that dude's got a Gatorade commercial. That's a big deal. <laughs> um, I'm trying uh, Kawhi Leonard, but he wasn't that big then when he was here. Yeah. I mean, Clay Thompson was here. That was people were freaking out about that. I really didn't care. I can't stand the Warriors. Yeah. No, outside of like, outside of Magic Johnson walking in, I don't think I'm gonna get too. That's right. right. That was last year. You said right. Yeah. You see that? Okay. Oh, well, you know what? Kobe used to come around this area once in a while. I mean, he lived down the street. Yeah. That was a big deal. People in this town went like, they go googly eyed when he come, came around. How about that real quick? Because we were talking about that a few weeks ago about the impact that Kobe had and his death had on the Newport community and just how. So, yeah, so everybody that was on that helicopter yeah. lived here, except right. for the, the one girl that lived in Huntington that went to my high school. Everybody mm-hmm. else 
was from Newport Beach. So it was it was a it was a big deal to this community. I mean, Kobe, the the difference between Kobe and a lot of LA sports stars, at least for this area, is that he lived here. He mm -hmm. was one of ours. Mm -hmm. And as far as his his impact on the Lakers, I mean, when you get somebody when they're 17 years old and yeah. they're here until they're 38, yeah. that's a that's a large impact. And yeah. I I can't remember anything in my lifetime being like that for anything out here certainly not for sports as we've said mm -hmm. there's not the the sports love is only for the lakers here that's the only yeah. thing that's unanimous right right and he was he was a big part and like i said for down here it was a big deal because he would go to all the local restaurants around here uh he was really good to everybody that worked at restaurants and that goes a long way in this town. So, mm -hmm. you know, all the people that work around here were really sad. You know, mm -hmm. there's a great story about a Mexican restaurant that his wife introduced him to. That's like a hole in the wall place where they would go all the time. And, you know, the staff there loved him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it was a big deal down here. And it was, yeah. it was super depressing. People were yeah. crying in this restaurant on the day of the crash. People were openly crying. Wow. I've never seen that before. Wow. Did you cry when Eli retired? No, no, it was time. No, it's kind of like when you let your dog live an extra year <laughs> and he starts shitting all over the house. And at that point, you're like, well, it's time. It's time. It's time. Yeah. Well, what about, and uh, what do you think about them? What's their deal? The Giants. I think that as long as there's one person making this, my whole thing is if you have one person making decisions, no matter what sport it is, then you can have one person to blame and one person to, Replace. but when you have the owner saying this and the GM saying that, then you get these things where everybody wants to blame everybody and nothing ever changes. So I'm, my hope is that one person is making decisions. And if that happens then, and it still is terrible, then we can fire them. Because I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in Dave Gettleman, but that's who I have to depend on now. You got Saquon. Yeah, yeah, but a running back is, you know, it's positional value. He's a great player, but a running back is a, a five-year mortgage, right? And Who's the quarterback? I don't even know who the quarterback is now. Dave Jones. Daniel Jones. Dave, Daniel Jones. I want to smack that dude every time I see him. He's just got he's one got of those. A, he's got a face you want to smack? Yeah. Do you feel well, that I mean, way? I, I I guess he looks like a guy that went to Duke that you would assume <laughs> said some stuff that you wouldn't like behind your back. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. That's exactly what he looks like. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know the look. Yeah. yeah. He looks like he looks like a guy that, you know, yeah. tucks tucks his shirt in. Sweater over the shoulders. The right. Yeah. Exactly. A guy that's that? never had a hard day in his life. You don't do that, do you? No. You're crazy? <laughs> no. I I only tuck my shirt in at weddings. Yeah. All right, we've gone off the rails. Have we? I think We're not so. gonna talk about how Carson Wentz looks like a cousin of the neighbors on the burbs. <laughs> Carson Wentz is a Super Bowl champion. <laughs> Yeah, so is Jeremy Shockey. <laughs> You're wearing a cast in a booth. You get the you get the ring either way. Carson Wentz has three NFC East divisional championships. Okay. One wait, NFC. Wait, 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 wait. How many of them was he on the field when they won it? Oh, you got to uh, think about it. See, that's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, two. Oh, really? Okay. Two. All right. All right. I thought he got hurt both years. No, he he won the uh, the East. Okay. He won the East last okay. year. All right. I'll take Carson Wentz. Carson. Huh? You're gonna say that? Uh, Car I'll I'll go with Carson Wentz. You're, you're gonna ride that, huh? I'm gonna ride it. Okay. I I believe in him. He's our guy. You know what the best ability is? Yeah. Availability. <laughs> I'd rather have. A potentially damaged or injury-prone 
Carson Wentz than Daniel Candy S. Jones. Okay, well, yeah, we're at, we're in year one of that. That is a fair comparison. Yeah, I'd rather have him than any. Okay, other would you rather have Carson Wentz or Donovan McNabb? Oh, you had to think. Let, let me finish my statement. Oh, I'd you had to think. Have, I'd rather have Carson Wentz over any NFC East quarterback right now. Okay, well, that's yeah. Okay, that's great. Whoop de do. Like, <laughs> give oh, me a break. <laughs> that's what you got to do. You got to win your division first. Okay, well, let's let's, you win let's your roll division. forward a few years and we'll see how that goes. If you don't win your division, then you don't have hope. I wouldn't know. I won a Super Bowl being a wild card, so. Oh, Christ. So what do we do now, man? So we go to sharkies.net. Net. Your phone number is? What's Sharkies At the phone store? Number? Yeah. Like, how do we call it? 949 well, you're you're calling the wrong store. We're closed. Okay. Well, how do we how do we order? How do we order? Is there an app? Well, you're gonna want to call. Yeah, you're gonna want to call Tower. Okay. That's the concept that's open. Okay. And the number is three one zero three seven nine sixty four hundred. Okay. And that's at fifty three Pier Avenue in Hermosa Beach. Okay. And that's where we and go to do the our. The food is great. Food is great. Drinks are great. And that's where we go to drive and do curbside pickup. Correct. We have a, an area you pull right up in a parking lot. We walk it right out to you. Yep. Check also, out the Instagram, Tower 12. Check out some of the videos the guys there are doing. They're fantastic. They'll show you everything that we're doing, and they do it in a funny way because most of the people that work at this company have a good sense of humor. Yep. Eric, I love you. Thanks for doing this. I have. I love uh, you, too. 50 million viewers that will be uh, seeing this. So this is awesome. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Later.